amongst ethnic minorities. Thank you. Canada is a country where we are not only tolerating each other. In fact, this is the country where we celebrate each other's cultures, each other's religious activities. This is the country where we love our neighbors and we are not forced. Constant domestic violence, violence with the kids. I don't think any party, irrespective of what the political strike is, or any Canadian, irrespective of what the color, creed, caste, or religion is, they would not tolerate it. We just cannot pinpoint a political community when we bring in legislation. But strengthening the legislation, if we need to, I certainly would support it. There are some holes in the legislation. But more importantly, putting more resources in, better than ever. Thank you. Um, I'm going to give uh, a relaxation on this. You will have 30 seconds to one minute to rebuttal on this. But in addition to that, if you would like to add any comment with Bill C-51, that you may do that too. You have another minute to rebuttal on this. And we'll start with Harpreet to comment on the tip line as well as C-51 if he would like. Thank you. And has to be orange on the way current Canada, which charge to get all the sexual assault on the guy. A tip line that he is information there was a misinformation that he is a particular community. The mafia of Chana Maki of source on that is the Shasadan, as in Alani and the communities no lag. We are Canadian and we will be Canadians, but it is unfortunate when they use the community's name. Nowhere it has been written, it is against any community. It is for all of us. Anybody who deals with this kind of thing needs to be dealt with, and a tip line has been established so that you can just report and rest the court will take it to action. Nothing is going to be done by the police. We hear from 911, to call it to call it to to call it 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 to I've worked with women's groups and children all my life fighting domestic violence. If we really want to do, 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 fight domestic violence, let's really talk about an action plan to do that. But in the middle of an election, to throw out that we're going to have a tip line not for domestic violence, but for barbaric cultural practices is the worst kind of politics. So don't you try to tell me about how much I care and I'm committed that to fighting no, domestic we know that. violence. And secondly, Secondly, I want to remind my Liberal friend, he was not in Parliament, but his party, just as they voted for C-51, voted for this bill, and one of the Liberals told me the reason they did it is they didn't want to be seen to be fighting against all these bills all the time. So, for me, I'm a principled fighter. I have principles and I stand by them. And I say if there is domestic violence, put millions into fighting domestic violence. We will do that when we form government because it's a curse on our society. But let's not turn it into a cultural idea. Thank you, Jenny. Super, go ahead with the comment. Good point, Ms. Sims raised that Justin Trudeau is the only leader from day one, he was very clear. We want to have a balance. On one side, we got to protect the security and public safety of Canadians. But on the other hand, we got to make sure that we don't jeopardize the civil liberties that we all enjoy. And you know what happened? NDP, when we brought in those amendments, that were protecting the civil liberties. There's only one party, that is the NDP, that did not support those amendments. And in February, Malkair was saying he's not going to repel, repeal Bill C-51. Then he came under pressure. March, I will repeal the bill. Just Thank you very much. We will move to the next question. Um, what is your stand on legalizing marijuana? 
If you justify it, then how do you plan on stopping the drug war plaguing our society? Marijuana or any other drugs like poppy seeds are not the cause of recent 47 shootings in Surrey. Marijuana is not the root cause of the unlawful activities that we are living through in Surrey. What are your government are going to do beyond attending to the marijuana issue to ensure that Surrey is as safe as it used to be before? And I'm going to ask Jenny to attend to that first. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for that question, Miria. First of all, uh, we are committed to decriminalizing marijuana. That means not making criminals out of people who have a small amount for personal use. We are against legalization at this stage because we don't have enough scientific evidence-based data and we want to see how this plays out in other areas. Right now, there is so much pressure and lack of resources on our, for our police that to make marijuana legal would be a huge problem. And I absolutely agree that we're not putting enough money and we will put more resources into our agencies to, f to fight the drug trade and also to make sure it doesn't enter into our country. But more than anything, folks, we have to spend a lot more money on education. Education is the one way we're going to overcome this. There is no magic pill. And any politician who tells you this can be solved quickly, they are not telling you the truth. So for me, let's sit down with the different levels of government, let's sit down with different agencies and communities, and let's develop a realistic, comprehensive action plan. But let us also make sure that we resource our police, we resource our CSIS, and we resource our border security. We can't keep asking them to do more if we don't give them the resources. I had the opportunity to go to lots of doorsteps and schools. Every school child that I asked this question, how easily do you have an access to marijuana? They say they can have an access to marijuana easier than they have to beer, alcohol or cigarettes. On one side, we have Mr. Harper's status quo. The, and the other question I asked was, the marijuana they say is the major crime issue that we are all seeing in this gang war. They have a status quo, they don't want to change. On the other hand, we have Ms. Sims, who already said they want to just decriminalize, means people can have an easy access. They can carry marijuana around, but that criminal factor that controls marijuana will still stay. And they say at this stage, and every scientist and research that we have, Georgia State has covered pretty well on this topic, that they all support that by regulating marijuana will help to take that crime factor out of this gang war. And that is what we are going to do. We are going to regulate marijuana and all the money that is coming from there, we will put into education and prevention to educate our youths. Thank you, sir. We're going to have her brain for them. We will do this, we will do that, but for the past four years in the parliament, have they ever raised this voice? We are the only party which says that marijuana should not be legalized. As parents, do you want shops to be open like we are talking today? In grocery shops, you can go and buy liquor. I as a parent don't want shops to be open where my children can easily go and procure marijuana. I am personally against it. I am proud to present a party which is absolutely against it. We do not want to legalize marijuana. The question is, what to do now? The question is education for the parents and the children and also see why all this is happening. Just that easy race for money, which is driving us for all this, needs to stop. We have to, as a community, come forward and start talking with our children. That mechanism which is shown to the children when they enter into the high school, that if you go into this drug trade, you will be living a luxurious lifestyle. We should, with the police help, tell them that the end is disastrous. 
We need to bring in more programs, involve the community, and that is what my focus is. As I said in the beginning, I will involve the community, we will come up with solutions and tell the government that these are the resources what we want. But just opening up shops is going to create more problems and we are already fed up of this. On the streets, when you go, you smell that skunk smell wherever you go. And that is a major crisis and we all need to start and raise our voice against it. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just going to add a little piece to that so you guys can continue on this conversation because this is something that is very important to everyone who is attending here. They really want to hear your views on it. Drugs and gang violence is a big problem in our community and in our province. Untreated mental illness, addiction, homelessness can spin a life out of control. Unemployment is also an issue that is creating, that is diverting the kids into unlawful activities. What in particular your party will do or is committing to do today in the presence of all our audience that will help us to address these issues? I'm going to have Jenny go first on that. Thanks. Thank you very much. First of all, just so you know, we've already announced a major commitment for a mental health strategy and an action plan. We know mental health issues are a major cause of uh, petty crime in our communities. And uh, just so you know, the, uh, we did have a national dialogue on uh, mental health and it was a conservative minister who came and congratulated me and said, Ginny, you've had more town halls and round tables on mental health and its impact on our communities than any other MP and I'm very, very proud of that. We've also committed to a national strategy on looking at Alzheimer's and dementia and impact of that. But when we're looking at crime, we have to look at it in a multifaceted way. We have to look at the causes of crime, invest in education, do early intervention, do enforcement, but at the same time, we have to take responsibility that we live in a society where we're not prepared to spend $10,000 a year on education, but we're prepared, or our government is prepared, to spend $130,000 a year to send that same child to prison. So we as a society have to hold our politicians' feet to the fire. And just so you know, I've introduced motions and bills for more resources you, and against gangs. So please. Homelessness is a compassionate issue. As Canadians, we are all very compassionate. And if we liberals or conservatives, conservatives have thrown some money on the homeless. Yes. But they are missing is the affordable housing. We have to put more resources into the affordable housing. We have announced $125 billion in infrastructure part of which goes into the affordable housing. Last week, Justin Trudeau was here. We announced $3 billion for home care and mental health because that is also a key that we need to address and that is what we are going to do. Thank you. Harper can go next. As far as affordable housing is concerned, $3.6 billion are being spent by the Government of Canada for this particular issue. But when you talk about crime, when crime is to be tackled, tough laws have to be made. While on one hand we say the police can only arrest a person and rest, they have to be taken to the court. Until and unless justice is served, how are they going to look into it? So basically, Huntak Jo Sadai he focus hai कि जेड़ा क्राइम करता है उन्हें चुन्नी दा बचे आज क्यों एक गल कही जाती है कि अमेरिका जहां फड़े जाइए ड्रग डीलिंग करते हुए कैनेडा च कोई गल नहीं है जे सरकार कानून दी टफ कर दी है गल कर दी है तो उसको क्या जाता है कि ये किसी कम्युनिटी नु सिर्फ वोट्स दी खातिर वो अगे ले आके गल पेश कर देती जाती है हैरानी होती है कि इदे उत्ते भी पॉलिटिक्स पॉलिटिक्स नहीं चाहिए थी सानू उन्हें एहोजी जिदे के कम्युनिटीज दे विच डिवीजन क्रिएट करने दी कोशिश कीती जा रही है क्राइम इज अफेक्टिंग ऑल ऑफ अस एंड वी नीड टू टैकल इट इन द सेम वे होमलेसनेस के मुद्दे सीएमएचसी जो है उस दे विच लोअर स्टैक स्ट्रक्चर जो इस समय सानू मान है कि पिछले 50 साल में कनाडा विच है जेडे पैसे बचदे ने यही किया जा रहा है कि तुसी रिसोर्स दी सही ऑप्टिमाइज यूटिलिटी जो है वो करो 
ਜਿਹੜਾ ਵਿਅਕਤੀ ਪੈਸੇ ਬਚਾਉਂਦਾ ਹੈਗਾ ਆਪਣੇ ਘਰ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਉਸ ਨੂੰ ਪੂਰਾ ਅਧਿਕਾਰ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਕਿਸ ਪਾਸੇ ਉਹ ਲਾਣਾ ਚਾਹੁੰਦਾ ਹੈ ਸੋ ਗਵਰਨਮੈਂਟ ਕਮਿਟਡ ਹੈਗੀ ਕਿ ਟੈਕਸਸ ਨੂੰ ਘੱਟ ਰੱਖਿਆ ਜਾਏ ਅਸੀਂ 1 ਮਿਲੀਅਨ ਲੋਕਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਟੈਕਸ ਰੋਲਸ ਤੋਂ ਬਾਹਰ ਕੱਢ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਹੈਗਾ ਸੋ ਗਵਰਨਮੈਂਟ ਦੀ ਪਾਲਿਸੀ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਹੈਵ ਰਾਈਟ ਅਮ ਇਜ਼ देयर ਡੂ ਗੈਸ ਨੀ 30 ਸੈਕਿੰਡਸ ਟੂ ਟਾਕ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਡਰਗਸ ਔਰ ਆਰਗੈਨਿਕਸ ਔਰ ਕੈਨ ਵੀ ਗੋ ਇਨ ਟੂ ਦ ਨੈਕਸਟ ਆਈ ਟ੍ਰਾਈ ਓਕੇ ਪਲੀਜ਼ ਵੀ ਵਿਲ ਸਟਾਰਟ ਵਿਦ ਜੈਨੀ ਥੈਨ ਹਰ ਬ੍ਰੇਕ ਐਂਡ ਥੈਨ ਸੀ Jenny, the last 30 seconds to even one minute because this is a very important issue and I would like to conclude that as to exactly anything that you want to add in, into drugs and gangs or any, any of that related matters. Please go ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, it's almost as if my colleagues don't even want to talk about some of the causes of crime or homelessness that have occurred in this country. It's been when we have weakened our social safety net. It has been like I know that since the gap between the rich and poor has increased it's harder for people to live off minimum wage many of them can't even get decent paying jobs and to say to them we're giving you more tax breaks doesn't help because these are not the people who are paying taxes we're talking about people who are Thank you so please We got to make sure that the low and middle class families are given help that they need child care for example right now harper is throwing in checks to millionaires and ndp will care sports that we are going to bring in child care tax free up to $6000 for low and middle class families that is going to help with the poverty thank you ਮੈਂ ਸਰੀ ਰਿਊਟਨ ਨੂੰ ਰਿਪਰੈਜ਼ੈਂਟ ਕਰਦਾ ਤੇ ਮੈਂ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਅਸ਼ਵਾਸਨ ਦਵਾਣਾ ਕਿ ਸਭ ਤੋਂ ਵੱਡੀ ਮੈਂ ਦੁਹਾਈ ਦੇਣਾ ਕਿ ਇਸ ਸਮੇਂ ਸਭ ਤੋਂ ਵੱਡੀ ਪ੍ਰੋਬਲਮ ਸਾਡੇ ਸਰੀ ਰਿਊਟਨ ਵਿੱਚ ਡਰਗਸ ਦੀ ਹੈ ਆਓ ਸਾਰੇ ਰਲ ਮਿਲ ਕੇ ਆਪਣੇ ਬੱਚਿਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਬਚਾਈਏ ਇਹਨਾਂ 18 ਦਾ ਘਰਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਜਨਮਨ ਡੋਰ ਨੋਕ ਕੀਤਾ ਹਰ 15ਵੇਂ ਵੀਵੇਂ ਘਰ ਤੋਂ ਬਾਅਦ ਇੱਕ ਘਰ ਐਸਾ ਮਿਲ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਹੈ ਜਿੱਥੇ ਡਰਗਸ ਵੜ ਚੁੱਕੇ ਨੇ ਇਸ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਜਿੱਥੇ ਸਰਕਾਰ ਕੋ ਸਿਮੰਗ ਕਰਦੇ ਆ ਪਰ ਨਾ ਆਪਣੀ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਜੋ ਕੁਝ ਅਸੀਂ ਕਰ ਸਕਦੇ ਆ ਆਓ ਹੱਥ ਮਿਲਾ ਕੇ ਅੱਗੇ ਆਈਏ ਪੂਰੇ ਕੈਨੇਡਾ ਪਰ ਵਿੱਚ ਕ੍ਰਾਈਮ ਥੱਲੇ ਜਾ ਰਹੇ ਪਰ ਸਰੀ ਨਿਊਟਨ ਕਿਉਂ ਵੱਧ ਰਿਹਾ ਹੈ ਇਸ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਸੋਚਣਾ ਪਏਗਾ ਮੋਢੇ ਨਾਲ ਮੋਢਾ ਜੋੜ ਕੇ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਅੱਗੇ ਆਣਾ ਪਏਗਾ ਤੇ ਇਹੋ ਜਿਹੀਆਂ ਆਰਗੇਨਾਈਜੇਸ਼ਨਸ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਡਰਗਸ ਦੇ ਖਿਲਾਫ ਆਵਾਜ਼ ਬੁਲੰਦ ਕਰਨੀਆਂ ਨੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦਾ ਸਾਥ ਦੇਣਾ ਪਏਗਾ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਹੈਵ ਰੀਡ ਨੈਕਸਟ ਕੁਐਸਚਨ ਫੈਡਰਲ ਗਵਰਨਮੈਂਟ ਪ੍ਰੋਵਿੰਸ਼ੀਅਲ ਗਵਰਨਮੈਂਟ ਐਂਡ ਯੂਨੀਅਨ ਬਾਡੀਜ਼ ਕੇਮ ਟੂ ਐਨ ਅਗਰੀਮੈਂਟ ਟੂ ਰਿਜ਼ੋਲਵ ਦ ਪੋਰਟ ਇਸ਼ੂ tough issues at ports and agreement among all parties is not honored as of yet are you familiar with the trucking issues at ports what steps would you and your party will take to resolve this issue and i'm going to ask her preet to talk first on this trucking the issue jada pichle kuch saal hi keh li assi jadon ke ubhar ke aaya samne is de vich bahut sari aisi cheezan hoyiyan jada ki mand bhagi hoyiyan federal sarkar ਪ੍ਰੋਵਿੰਸ਼ੀਅਲ ਸਰਕਾਰ ਦੇ ਜੇ ਆਪਸ ਵਿੱਚ ਟਕਰਾਅ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਹੈਗਾ ਹੈ ਉਸ ਕਾਰਨ ਸਾਡੇ ਭਰਾਵਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਸਫਰ ਕਰਨਾ ਪਿਆ ਆਟੋਨਮਸ ਬਾਡੀ ਹੈ ਇੱਕ ਕੋਰਟ ਮੈਟਰੋ ਵੈਂਕੂਵਰ ਅਤੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਜੋ ਫੈਸਲੇ ਕੀਤੇ ਉਸ ਵਿੱਚ ਜਿੰਨਾ ਵੀ ਫੈਡਰਲ ਸਰਕਾਰ ਦਾ ਯੋਗਦਾਨ ਸੀ ਤੇ ਜਿੰਨਾ ਵੀ ਪ੍ਰੋਵਿੰਸ਼ੀਅਲ ਸਰਕਾਰ ਦਾ ਯੋਗਦਾਨ ਸੀ ਉਸ ਵਿੱਚ ਟਕਰਾਅ ਹੀ ਰਿਹਾ ਭਾਵੇਂ ਇੱਕ ਐਡਜਸਟਰ ਵੀ ਬਿਠਾਇਆ ਗਿਆ ਲੇਕਿਨ ਉਹ ਵੀ ਉਹ ਮਸਲਾ ਹੱਲ ਨਹੀਂ ਕਰ ਸਕਿਆ ਉਸ ਵਿੱਚ ਦੋ ਖਾਮੀਆਂ ਨਜ਼ਰ ਆਈਆਂ ਜਿਸ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਕਿ ਆਪਸ ਵੀ ਫੁੱਟ ਜੋ ਸੀ ਉਹ ਵੀ ਇੱਕ ਕੰਮ ਇੱਕ ਕਾਰਨ ਬਣਿਆ ਤੇ ਸਰਕਾਰ ਜੋ ਸੀ ਉਸ ਤੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਪ੍ਰੈਸ਼ਰ ਨਹੀਂ ਪੈ ਸਕਿਆ ਜਿੰਨਾ ਪੈਣਾ ਚਾਹੀਦਾ ਸੀ ਮੈਂ ਐਸ ਪਰਸਨਲ ਅਜੇ ਮੈਂ ਪਾਰਟੀ ਦਾ ਕੋਈ ਅਹੁਦੇਦਾਰ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੈਗਾ ਜਿੰਨਾ ਮੈਂ ਯੋਗਦਾਨ ਪਾ ਸਕਦਾ ਸੀ ਮਿਨਿਸਟਰਸ ਨਾਲ ਮੀਟਿੰਗ ਕਰਵਾਉਣ ਦਾ ਉਹ ਮੈਂ ਪਿੱਛੇ ਰਹਿ ਕੇ ਕਰਵਾਇਆ ਮੈਂ ਅੱਗੇ ਆ ਕੇ ਇਹ ਨਹੀਂ ਕਿਹਾ ਕਿ ਮੈਂ ਕਰਵਾ ਰਿਹਾ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਇਹ ਮੇਰੇ ਭਰਾਵਾਂ ਦਾ ਮਸਲਾ ਸੀ ਅਸੀਂ ਇਫੈਕਟ ਹੋਣੇ ਆ ਤੇ ਕੋਈ ਵੀ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀ ਦਾ ਵਿਅਕਤੀ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਇਫੈਕਟ ਹੋਏ ਮੈਂ
A deal was reached where the provincial government enjoyed the photo opportunities with the truck drivers and then it turned out the deal was not a deal was not a deal. Now, from my teaching days, I'm used to the Liberal government signing deals and then breaking them either then or six years later taking things away from you, just as the Conservatives tried to take things away from negotiated settlements. So in this case, the truckers have been betrayed by the Liberal government and they have been betrayed by the Federal government and I will continue to play a constructive role I played then and I play now and I will play in future. And I have been in opposition, but I can tell you, you couldn't have had a stronger warrior there on behalf of the truck drivers than you had in me, both locally, at the provincial level when I took my voice, and I want to remind my colleague to the left that Christy Clark calls him brother, so he had the greatest role he could have played, and why isn't there a settlement? They signed it, live up to your Thank deal. You, please. Thank you. It's great to hear Ginny making this noise. But when there was a first meeting in Grand Pass, there was only one politician out of three was missing. That was Ginny Sims. That she was not even there at that time. You know what I did at that time? I did not play politics just like Ginny is trying to play now. I said, irrespective of our political stripes are, irrespective whether it's a local, federal, or provincial government, we have to come together. The suggestion that I made was Penny Pretty and the NDP Dia. We have the Port Authority to sit here. And the South of Vancouver to the MP or Conservative to the Liberal Critic to the Judy Sugro. I said, I am going to be able to do this because the truck driver, trucking companies, the children, the children, ਇਹ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਪੋਲਿਟਿਕਸ ਨਾ ਖੇਡੋ ਮੈਂ ਉਸੇ ਵੇਲੇ ਚੱਕ ਕੇ ਮੂਨੇ ਅੱਜ ਕ੍ਰਿਸਟੀ ਨੂੰ ਕਹਿੰਦੇ ਸਿਸਟਰ ਮੈਂ ਉਹਦੇ ਵੀ ਬੋਲ ਕੀਤਾ ਅੱਜ ਵੀ ਇਹ ਤੋਂ ਘੰਟਾ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਜੇ ਮੇਰੀ ਗੱਲ ਹੋਈ ਆ ਤਾਂ ਵੀ ਇਸੇ ਇਸ਼ੂ ਤੇ ਹੋਈ ਆ ਔਰ ਇੱਕ ਇੱਕ ਬੰਦਾ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਇਸ ਇਸ਼ੂ ਤੇ ਖੜਾ ਰਿਹਾ ਟਰੱਕ ਡਰਾਈਵਰਸ ਨਾਲ ਟਰੱਕਿੰਗ ਕੰਪਨੀਜ਼ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਉਹ ਸੁਖਧਾਰ